Hey you guys, I wanted to go ahead and get your second lecture recorded for you. Um, I hope that you are doing well. Uh, we're going to talk about the second gas law that we're going to cover, and that is Boyle's Law. So Robert Boyle is who's responsible for Boyle's Law. Um, you should research more about him. He was super, super cool. One of the um, kind of fathers of modern chemistry. So if you need something to do, go research Robert Boyle. He was a really, really neat guy. Okay. Um, we're going to be talking about how pressure and volume are related. So if temperature is held constant, the pressure, um, as the pressure of a gas increases, volume decreases. So um, let me see if I can get a, a drawing tool going here. Um, so I want you to think about a, a squishy, like a stress ball, okay? As you increase pressure on a stress ball, you're squeezing it. What happens to the volume of that stress ball? It decreases, right? So as pressure increases, volume decreases. They have an inverse relationship. Um, the pressure that you exert forces the gas to take up less space, which therefore means it takes up less volume. Um, the expression for uh, Boyle's law is pressure one times volume one equals pressure two times volume two when temperature is held constant. Boyle's law is only true at constant temperature. Here's a representation of that. I really love these diagrams because you can see um, as you exert less pressure, the gas particles are allowed to move more freely and therefore take up more space. But as you increase pressure, the particles can take up less space and therefore have more collisions with, um, with a container. So pressure and volume, inverse relationship. Less volume, more pressure. Um, Increased volume, less pressure, less collisions. So let's solve a, a problem here. Um, a balloon contains 30 liters of helium gas at 103 kPa. What is the volume of the helium when the balloon rises to the altitude where the pressure is only 25 kPa? Um, and if you remember what we talked about the other day, uh, Mount Everest, I think, is about 32, it's in the 30s K, uh, kPa. So this would be, uh, this balloon would be at an altitude above that of Mount Everest, okay? So it starts, uh, starts here at this um, altitude, or excuse me, at this pressure, and then it, it goes up to um, a pressure less than that of um, Mount Everest. So it's, it's pressure is even less than Mount Everest. It's even higher in the atmosphere, okay? Um, so let's identify our variables. Our first volume, our initial volume, we call V1. Our initial pressure we call P1 and then we end up with a final pressure we call that P2. Okay so what are we looking for here? We are looking for final volume that would be V2. Our expression remember is V1 P1 equals V2 P2 and I'm looking for V2. Um, I would usually show you this on a whiteboard by saying um, put your finger on the uh, variable that you want. Uh, so put your finger on V2. Um, whatever else is on that side of the equation, notice it's P2, you're going to divide by that. So it will be V1 P1 divided by P2 equals V2. Each time you use this expression, you may be solving for a different part of it. Sometimes you're going to be solving for V2. Sometimes you'll be solving for P2 or even an initial condition. So you might be solving for V1 or P1. Um, either way, put your finger on what you don't know, divide by the other thing on that side of the equation, and that will give you your setup. Then you plug in your values from the problem. So we're going to plug in 30.0 liters. I like to put parentheses here to keep things separated. Um, initial pressure, 103 kPa kilopascals over P2, which is 25.0 kPa. Okay, the cool thing is everything in this problem has three significant figures, so your answer will certainly have three significant figures. 30 times 103 divided by 25. Handy dandy calculator. Um, guys, if you don't have a scientific calculator at home, that's fine. You can use the one that's on your phone. You can use one on a computer. Um, most of what we're going to be doing is pretty simple multiplication, division, addition, subtraction stuff for right now. So a simple calculator will work just fine. Um, and so you end up with 100, 
23.6. Um, KPA cancel, since they occur on top and on bottom, so you'll end up with liters. But this is too many significant figures. This is four significant figures. So I actually have to cut it off here. So it will be 124 liters. How do we feel about that? Now we need to evaluate. Does this make sense? We know pressure and volume are inversely related. Um, my pressure decreased um, to about 25 to about 25 percent of original. Okay, so um, since my pressure decreased about four times, right? My um, my volume should increase about by that much, approximately that much. Well, 124 is about four times um, 30. So it, it really it makes sense. You need to evaluate your um, your problem to see and make sure that the your numerical answer matches the relationship that you already know. Okay, we're gonna be doing some problems over this. I'll be available for questions. Have a great day, you guys, and a great week.